Early in the last century, a small number of upper-class Americans seeking shelter from technology and a return to a simpler way of life traveled to the most isolated islands on Earth, Hawaii. In a few years, the islands became an American resort outpost. To accommodate the influx of wealthy tourists, a city was built over a saltwater marsh on the south side of Oahu. American tourists arriving at Waikiki for the first time were greeted to an exotic experience of Hawaiian ukuleles, salient flowers, and hula dancers. Nowhere else in the world was quite like Waikiki, the water a constant 76 degrees, never too cold to swim. By 1910, Waikiki was a center of hedonistic affluence, leisure time, Permissive social attitudes and a number of distractions combined to create a nirvana where vacation really meant fun and the beach was the place to go. It was from this backdrop that a group of native Hawaiian bohemians, dubbed the Waikiki Beach Boys, emerged to pioneer one of the most important youth cultural developments of the 20th century, surfing. No one epitomized the traditional Hawaiian lifestyle more than the Waikiki Beach Boys, the men who found a way to live and work year-round on the beaches. Among their ranks were Rabbit Kakai, known to surf history as the father of modern hot dogging, Squeeze Kamana, possibly the greatest ukulele soloist of all time, and Duke Kahanamoku, a three-time Olympic gold medalist and the father of modern surfing. Christian missionaries who had arrived in Hawaii after 1820 felt that the tradition of surfing was sinful due to its practitioners going out into the ocean half naked. Among the few locals still surfing at the end of the 19th century was one Duke Paoa Kahanamoku, a full-blooded Hawaiian. By 1900, surfing had almost disappeared throughout the Hawaiian Islands, except in a few isolated spots, where only a handful of Duke's friends dared take boards into the sea. Duke overcame great obstacles in his life. He started a swimming club for Native Hawaiians in 1911, when all of the clubs were Caucasian only. He continued to speak Hawaiian until the end of his life, and mentored many of the greatest surfers of all time. By 1912, Duke had broken four swimming records, received three Olympic gold medals, and was hired to perform surfing demonstrations around the world. No matter how many great surfers he would mentor, there would never be another like Duke. Back in Hawaii, the Waikiki Beach Boys found affection, fame, and notoriety from the fact that they were, above all, entertainers during the vaudeville era. Legendary Beach Boy parties were held in the 1920s at the Moana Hotel, where from sundown to sunup, the Beach Boys would strum their ukuleles, drink stiff cocktails, and sing Hawaiian songs. Now it's time to drink. Come on, let's have a drink. Have another one. How about a little drink? Yes, sir. And how about another drink? While Hawaiians might see the Waikiki Beach Boys as a reflection of what they are, the rest of us viewed them as a projection of what we might be. To the majority of Americans, those who lost the geographical lottery and were forced to grow up without a steady diet of surf, sand, and sun, the Waikiki Beach Boys, just one of the guys' attitude, evoked something more aspirational, the good life. This is our number one Beach Boy song, everybody. Nice party song, want all of you sing along with us. All you gotta do is say, hey, lay, kale, lay, all right? Okay, gang? Tall, dark, and thin tonight, hemo skin. More than the fact that the Waikiki Beach Boys revived the sport of surfing and defined its cultural context, more than the fact that the Waikiki Beach Boys shattered existing swimming records, more than the fact that the Waikiki Beach Boys invented the catamaran canoe and evolved the surfboard and outrigger canoe, more than all of these, the Beach Boys became a symbol of all that was great about Hawaii. Born poor men, natives from an old world tossed into the throes of American capitalism, their dignity remained intact. No matter who came to Hawaii, Bing Crosby, Shirley Temple, Mickey Rooney, the Waikiki Beach Boys were whom they came to see. Without the Waikiki Beach Boys, the ancient ritual of surfing would not have survived Hawaii's cultural decimation. Their legend is the story of Waikiki itself, and their achievements continue to inspire new generations. And I care not for your cafe life, for Waikiki is good enough all for me. You know, I care not for your salsa lace, for calico is good enough for me.
You know, society may be the fashion, but you know, I crave simplicity and all that I'm looking for. Is a 50-50 girly for me 